this is just a recapitulation from an earlier session if as you remember so there are three broad types of studies descriptive analytical and experimental so descriptive studies we use for estimating the frequency of the disease and identifying the distribution pattern of the disease in terms of time place and person and from that we formulate a hypothesis and in analytical study we test that hypothesis in analytical study we also find frequency we find distribution and in addition we find the causes or precipitating factors of the outcome that is the disease and thirdly once we have formulated the hypothesis we have tested the hypothesis we identify certain prevention or therapeutic factors we use measures to control the problem prevent the problem so now we have to experiment those and see whether they are safe and effective so that we do by means of experimental studies so once those are tested so it also is an indirect proof of the causes or the precipitating factors so these are the two things that we do from experimental studies so this also i had discussed with you earlier observational studies that is descriptive and analytical and then the third one is experimental studies that is randomized controlled clinical trial field trial community trial and non randomized or quasi experimental studies so these i will discuss now and this is the hierarchy of epidemiological studies this also i had discussed earlier so randomized control trial lies at quite an upper rung of the hierarchy so i start with experimental epidemiology so it involves some action experiment so we do some action or we do some intervention or manipulation like say deliberate application of some preventive or therapeutic measure or withdrawal of suspected cause in the experimental group while we make no change in the control group so we have two groups experimental group and control group and we give some intervention here we don't do anything in the control group and we follow them up and we observe what is happening and compare the outcome in both the groups so these are the types of experimental studies i've already told you randomized control trial non randomized trial field trial and community trial so indications when do we do these studies so when there is good evidence of an association between exposure and outcome how is the good evidence generated by the earlier studies that is descriptive study formulates the hypothesis analytical study the first step is case control study which finds association between the exposure and the outcome and then cohort study which starts with the exposure outcome develops later so it establishes causal association also so now it is quite evident that this exposure leads to this outcome so now we start the uh, experimental study and we also for these problems that we have encountered we have developed preventive measures we have developed therapeutic measures and now we want to find their efficacy and effectiveness and um how they can control so now we have to do this experimental study so these are the indications when we do the study that is the risk factor and outcome exposure and outcome is causally associated and it has been proved so if this is the cause then if we target something some intervention measure on that cause it should prevent the outcome so these measures have also been designed and now we can do this type of study so randomized control trial So the features of this it is an experimental study where the effect of an intervention is assessed by collecting data before and after the intervention. So we can compare between one intervention and another or no intervention or multiple intervention. And so for this we have two groups the intervention or study group and the control group. So objective sufficiency randomized control trial in short is known as RCT. So what are the objectives of RCT why do we need to do RCT so to evaluate new forms of therapy or prevention therapeutic measure or prevention measure we have found something discovered something now we want to test it so that can be new drug or new treatment modality it can be new medical or healthcare technology it can be new way of delivering the healthcare that is delivering services health services or it can be some new method of primary prevention of the problem 
or new programs of screening, early detection, new diagnostic tests. So all these can be evaluated by RCTs. So now how do we compare? We have two groups I said. So one group we give the intervention, the other group we give nothing, no measure. Or we give intervention to one group and we continue the original treatment with the other group because when we test a drug on a diseased individual or in a diseased group so we cannot stop any treatment we cannot just say no we stop treatment for this group and we see how they turn because they are diseased so they are on treatment and that has to be continued so now what we do is in the control group we continue with the regular intervention. Suppose we are doing for hypertension. Suppose we have found out a very good drug for hypertension, one antihypertensive agent that is supposed to be very good. So what we do is in the control group, they continue with the regular antihypertensive they are on. Whatever they are taking, they continue that treatment, regular treatment. And the intervention group, we give the new antihypertensive that we want to test. So that can happen regular ongoing measure or sometimes we can give multiple uh, treatment we can test also. So multiple measures also can be given and those can be compared. So this is the design of an RCT. So we have a reference population from which we select the study participants and we take their consent. We select them according to the eligibility. I have in earlier session told you about eligibility criteria inclusion criteria, exclusion criteria. So accordingly, when these people are eligible for the study, we take their consent because we cannot force anyone to do anything. That also I have discussed in earlier session on ethics, biomedical ethics. So we take their consent. If they are agreeing to participate in the study, we have a group of population that is our study population.